at Farrington Aircraft want to thank you for your interest in our exciting Air and Space 18A. In our first video, we introduced you to this versatile aircraft and showed you some of its useful applications. But now that you're interested in taking a further look, we're ready to give you some specifics. If you're flying for a company or a government agency, chances are cost is the major concern. That's the first area where the 18A shines. Let's make a comparison in buying a small helicopter or buying an 18A. Count on paying about $150,000 or more for the small helicopter. Now check out the list price on the Air and Space 18A. At around $100,000, that's a minimum of a third less. Are you currently piloting a fixed wing aircraft or a helicopter? As a pilot, you'll notice certain similarities, but also the differences. The pre-flight is pretty much the same as in the helicopter. Utilizing the checklist, the walk around is simple and straightforward. The 18A engine starts like a normal aircraft, both magnetos on and start. Once we get the engine started, the differences become obvious. When we taxi, the helicopter must hover taxi to some position for normal departure. The downwash from the rotor blades is about 60 miles per hour. That causes lots of dust and can be dangerous to small aircraft on the ground. The 18A doesn't have those difficulties. Its rear-mounted engine pushes the craft safely in tight airport taxiways. Nose wheel steering is controlled by applying left or right brake. Both the helicopter and the 18A spin the blades up prior to liftoff. The 18A can't hover taxi like the helicopter, but it does perform a vertical takeoff. How does the 18A achieve a vertical takeoff? Through a simple clutching system, the pilot brings the rotors up to speed. Then, pressing a button on the panel, declutches the system. This allows full power transfer to the engine and full engine RPM. Depending on which type of takeoff is desired, the pilot then presses a button on the throttle and the 18A jumps into the air. Let's watch a profile of an R-22 and the 18A take off and land from the same spot on the runway, showing climb out and landing of each craft. Under most circumstances, the 18A can operate out of the same space as the helicopter. Once airborne, the helicopter demands a higher degree of attention to collective, power, and cyclic inputs. It's a very sensitive aircraft. Compare that to the 18A. In flight, the workload is less demanding, allowing the pilot more time for observation. In the air, a helicopter's rotor blades pull the machine through the air. The air flow comes from above the rotors. The 18A is just the opposite. A forward-pushing propeller moves the 18A ahead. Airflow comes from under the rotor blades, causing them to spin. You'll find a smooth ride in the 18A. The design of the three-bladed rotor system easily absorbs turbulence. Turns are coordinated with pedals and stick. At a 90 mile per hour cruise, the 18A has a three hour endurance and over 200 mile range. Depending on density altitude, Either aircraft will have approximately the same service ceiling. Both craft can fly at or below 50 miles per hour for low speed maneuvers and maintain adequate cooling. The 18A and the R-22 are both approved for day or night VFR flights. Now let's bring both the R-22 and 18A back in for landing. The R-22 can be brought down gently under normal conditions. So can the 18A. But landing areas aren't always smooth, as you know. Landing in unprepared areas with the 18A is easy because of its shock-absorbing landing gear. The stance is wider, too. That helps prevent dynamic rollover. 
Landing a helicopter is a good test of pilot skill. The operator must flare the craft while coordinating collective and cyclic control. Landing the 18A is much simpler. The operator flares the craft just like the helicopter. But since the rotor blades are always in auto rotation, the touchdown is simple. No pilot ever likes to think about an engine failure, but they occasionally happen. That's where the 18A can take some worry out of an emergency situation. When a helicopter engine fails, the pilot has about two seconds to declutch the system, lower the collective, and initiate auto rotation. This must be accomplished to transition the rotor system from a forward pulling mode to a descending mode. That's just the beginning. When the helicopter is ready to land, the pilot must flare, level the aircraft, and pull the collective. If the sequence is too early or too late, a hard landing will result. That isn't likely to happen in the Air and Space 18A. As we mentioned, the 18A is always in auto rotation. In the event of an engine failure, the aircraft is still in auto rotation mode. Upon flare for landing, the aircraft is in a normal nose-high attitude and there is no possibility of striking a tail rotor. It's just a normal landing. Now let's get into some specifications. The 18A is powered by a Lycoming O360 engine, which develops 180 horsepower. The engine drives a Hartzell constant speed propeller. Fuel capacity is 27.8 gallons usable with a nine gallon per hour average fuel burn. Maximum gross weight is 1,800 pounds. Empty weight is 1,315 pounds. This gives you a useful load of 485 pounds compared to the R22 with 450 pounds. Standard equipment includes parking brake, nav lights, engine primer, magnetic compass, landing light, blade tie downs, rotor brake, standard flight and engine instruments. Of course, there are some optional equipment features you may want and we'll be happy to tell you more about them. Earlier, we mentioned cost as being a primary factor in choosing the 18A as opposed to choosing the small helicopter. Based on 1,000 flight hours per year, the total operating cost is $40.90 per hour. That includes hangar rent, insurance, depreciation, fuel, oil, reserve for scheduled maintenance, 100-hour inspections, and overhaul reserve for engine. The $40.90 per flight hour is half or less than what it costs with a small helicopter. Right now there are Air and Space 18A heliplanes working in areas where helicopters were once used and doing it at a much lower cost. Areas like traffic and weather reporting for television and radio stations, forestry patrol, missing person searches, and utility lines inspections. We could go on and on telling you why we're so excited about the 18A heliplane. Our introductory video about the 18A is getting good response from corporations and government agencies, as well as the pilots who fly for them. The 18A may just be what you're looking for in getting your aerial work done, but at a much lower cost. This video is a good example of what the 18A can do for you, but it doesn't take the place of a personal demonstration. We look forward to having you climb into the cockpit for your test flight. Give us a call today.